Museum. And Mr. Koltz, I would like to warmly welcome you all to the seminar, uh, seminar Migrants and Living Heritage. Uh, during this morning, we are going to focus on the theme of intangible cultural heritage, especially regarding traditions brought with newcomers to Finland. On 2013, Finland has ratified the UNESCO Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Culture Heritage and the National Board of Antiquities is the responsible of implementing this convention in Finland. This is Kaisa's already second collaboration with the National Board of Antiquities. Last August, on this wonderful yard of the National Museum, we had a workshop called My Living Heritage which I know that you are going to see a bit of our workshop on video later. And uh, in that workshop, each participant uh, was just sharing their own cultural heritage and we could ask a few questions and learn about a bit of each other's culture. Well, each of us carries a large portion of intangible cultural heritage. For example, in my own case, uh, I've moved to Finland, and I feel that I've transmitted many aspects of my cultural heritage to others, especially regarding food. Uh, I could have, I think I could say about myself that I've come, I've been uh, kind of an ambassador of the 1,000 different Portuguese ways of preparing codfish. <laughs> yeah. Well, here at Kaisa, we offer especially to primary schoolers and also preschoolers different workshops based on transmitting others' cultural heritage. For example, we have a mathematical game called Tokapu, which comes from the Andean countries and have been used since the Inca times. So today, what we are going to do, we'll debate on what is living heritage. First, Lena Marcio from the National Board of Antiquities will present us how the living heritage in Finland has been collected. Then we will hear a comment on this subject by free writer and civic activist Mariam Abdul Karim. Then it will be time to hear about an example of a living heritage by Som Dev, who works with Helena Rautavara Museum, and she will talk about Durga Puja in Helsinki. Then we have visual artist Jamil Kamanger. will also share with us his personal history which is based, which, which is the base for art making. And before the coffee break, we will hear three songs by Street Soul Studio. After the coffee break, your work starts. So we are going to do a collective work in four different round tables, which in our case they are quite square, but let's imagine they are round tables. And each of the table will be focusing on one subject. Well, which of you, each of you is able to choose one of the subjects. Uh, on one table, facilitated by myself and visual artist Rosa Maria Bolo, we will concentrate on the question how to safeguard and transmit living heritage. <coughs> on the second table, uh, there is going to be Lena Marcio and Kaiser's own immigration coordinator Hamsa, we will focus on the theme of making living heritage visible. On the third table, Ilona Nini Gangas from Helena Rautavara Museum together with Som Data Dev will discuss the theme of living culture in diaspora. And finally, the fourth group, led by Rita Pakvalen from Culture for All Service and Julian Ogusu from Arts Promotion Center Finland. Uh, your participation is of great importance today. So, Please, we hope that we all here will be very active. Uh, the first uh, uh, presentations will be quite short, so I believe there is not going to be maybe so much time for questions and comments, but please keep them in mind, because then in the workshops we can discuss all the questions and comments you guys have. So yeah, uh, what do we hope for this? We hope that after these three and a half hours, we will together have more ideas how to transmit and collect the living heritage in Finland. I hope you all have a very fruitful seminar and now I ask Lena Marcio to come and tell us about the <coughs> museum uh, work.
by the way, I will just say one more thing. Uh, I don't know, maybe I have my, my voice goes everywhere, right? Yeah, yeah, it goes. So, um, I have also given the worst task of all. So, each of these um, presentations, if you guys go a bit over the time, I will be the one showing this two minutes. So, please try to be on time. And then when I say thank you, just please understand that it's time to end. So, I'm sorry, but I, I will be the bad guy. Okay, my name is Lena Marzio, and I work for Museo Vilasta, the National Board of Antiquities, and I have the happy task to coordinate the convention for safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage. It's been my job for three and a half years already now. I will start off my presentation with showing you just a small clip about the workshop we had a month ago in the Garden of National Museum. Uh, the sound is not very good, but, but you'll see a bit of the atmosphere here and maybe even here. I'm going to perform. It is from a story, and the story is also written in Tang Dynasty. It, the story tells a young girl, her name is Yin Yin, and a, a young boy, Zhang Shen, their love story. Uh, the Yin Yin is a uh, father, is the prime minister uh, at that time, and the Zhang Shen is from a very, very poor family, so his mother don't let them to be together. share one small thing what maybe somebody you know but maybe we don't know like lots of people maybe we don't know why I think that you maybe uh, notice that Indian women they are wearing here in between two eyebrows there is one like in the medium, medium, mid, like middle point uh, like this is called bindi in our language so women is we we think that women is the um, unity of the whole culture so they are actually united the family and this is the thing this point also we use like a, as a like united point because it's focus so that's why women they used to wear this because the women in the family they are focus so this is a, like a very short thing but small thing but it's really like big meaning song has a story and it's all coming from cultural stories and things been, yeah. uh, the song is basically means uh, I have nothing to do in the market so I will, I will explain the whole idea is that the guy is explaining that he's actually going for his loved one to, to see her but that, and he's pretending like he's buying stuff night that we had a really bad storm in August so we were lucky still to get that sunshine 
So this video can then be downloaded from the, from the web page of this seminar and also all these presentations and then the video clips of this seminar will be there as well. <coughs> what do you want to safeguard and transmit? What is living heritage in Finland? And how can we make diversity visible also in this context? <laughs> I'll let you go. According to UNESCO, what is then living heritage? Uh, the convention is a 13 pager, so not very much. But when tens of countries or states discuss what, could, what can be in one, one document, it's not really a lot. But festivities and practices is one of them. There we see a bonfire. It can be either on midsummer or on Easter. Music and dance, that is certainly something that comes into one's mind right away. Performing arts, be it theater, puppet theater, circus culture, oral traditions, of course. Language is really something where we transmit the culture forward. Crafts. This is maybe something where the tangible and the intangible comes most close to each other. They are basically the side of, of one coin. Food traditions. I think here, both with the food traditions and festivities and practices, it's really something that makes heritage an, like an everyday thing for all of us. It's not about if you live in a mansion or go to a museum, but you, you live with your living heritage every day games and playing as well, also nature and the universe, whether we go skiing or we pick up blueberries or, or so on. The Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage, it's, a, it's a quite a new convention, but what is really mar remarkable is that so far, <coughs> 174 states have already ratified the convention. <coughs> And I think all of you know about the World Heritage Convention and the World Heritage List. So this is kind of, kind of a sister convention to that one. But this is focused on living heritage, something that is happening now when we live and it has its uh, roots somewhere else in the history. Aims are to promote the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage, ensure respect, for intangible cultural heritage, not certainly an easy task, but an ambitious aim, and also to, <coughs> sorry, to raise awareness on the importance of it. In Finland, we have been on, on board now for uh, four years, and uh, I, I am the full-time coordinator, and we also have an advisory group under the ministry. What is then the safeguarding that is mentioned so often it's something safeguarding without freezing. So this is now not the rehearsal where we take the sauna vasta and put it into a vitrine and try to keep it the same all the time. But this is something about active use. Best safeguarding is when living heritage is in use and is lived. It's about awareness raising, even inventory. I'll tell you in a moment more about that. Documentation research also about protecting related places and materials, encouraging transmission through education. Katja here mentioned, for example, on the courses that are made or are, are, are uh, being, uh, uh, t takes place here in Kaisa or in many other NGOs, but all of the activities that happen at home in a more informal context or then even formally in different NGOs, even in our school system from kindergartens to universities. So all this is about safeguarding. As mentioned, there is also the, the <coughs> list of intangible cultural heritage, or there is actually two lists and one register at the UNESCO level. Um, it has already over 400 elements in it. And here are some examples. Flamenco from Spain, uh, puppet theatre, I think it's from four or five different countries there, uh, carb carpet um, craft, the craft of making a carpet, I think it's from three or four different countries, Iran, uh, one of them I think there is maybe Azerbaijan and, and some other countries 
Mexican equestrian tradition, Vanuatu sand drawings, here in the corner, Chinese paper cutting, even Mexican Day of the Dead. Uh, Finland doesn't have any elements on these international lists yet, because we first need to have a national inventory, and that is something we will have towards the end of the year, and so then it's a possible for us to apply something to the UNESCO list. It's quite exciting to see what it will be. Uh, inventorying is something where we are making visible the living heritage in each of the countries. This is one of the obligatory things that we need to do when we have signed the, the convention. Uh, we have like different phases in this inventorying process in Finland. We have Viki inventory for living heritage <coughs> and from there it's possible to apply to this thing called national inventory and later then to these international lists of <coughs> UNESCO. But it's only one element per country per year, so it won't be very many that will be taken there from Finland either in the coming years. The Wiki Inventory for Living Heritage. Uh, take a brochure if you didn't take it already, it's there in the corner. There you will have the links to the Wiki Inventory and on our Facebook page and all the other work we've been doing. But basically the Wiki Inventory is a media Wiki uh, solution that the, the National Board of Antiquities has opened to, to uh, a year and a half ago. And there we are collecting articles from different communities and NGOs about what is living heritage in Finland today. Uh, it's been a success story. Uh, so far we have already 120 examples from over 150 communities around the country. Uh, basically they are one or two page texts, uh, a gateway to other information. So it's a platform to make visible living heritage in our country. It works in three languages, Finnish, Swedish and English but it's also possible to contribute in other languages. So far we have one article in Northern Sami and another one in the Roma language, but we would very much welcome articles from many different uh, languages in our country, but they also need to be either in Finnish or Swedish. Uh, some examples, or maybe at this point, I will try to go and give you a glimpse of it. how it looks like, wiki inventory for living heritage. Let's try to get rid of that. Oh no! Minor de technical problems. Let's switch on to English. So it has nine different categories. Festivities and practices, music and dance, performing arts, oral tradition, crafts, food traditions, games and playing, nature and the universe, and even good practices. Um, what shall I take? Maybe I'll go to festivities and practices. These are the ones that are in English at the moment, maybe celebrating Midsummer. Uh, I think we're all aware of that. So it's a one pager telling about who is doing it, how is it being done, what's the background, how is it transmitted, how does the future look like, and then there is always the community behind the submission, sort of someone who is. Signing it under here, it's Seurasaari Satya, the foundation for Seurasaari. Uh, basically, I think most of the cases they are NGOs that have been writing these or are sort of behind it, but not necessarily. We have one example on log driving competitions where there is three people. One of them is driving the logs down the rivers, and one of them is having a block, and one is taking the photos. So a community can be even as small as three different persons. And uh, if you remember something from today, I hope it is the Wiki inventory and you'll have it in your 
your mind and we will then later discuss in our uh, workshop uh, how we could have how we could see the diversity in today's Finland also in the wiki inventory living culture in Finland is much more than sauna, midsummer traditions, vappu and Karelian pies. Mm. And we would very much like to have this visible. We have one example related to, to uh, my migrant traditions, African music and dance in Finland, a very broad-based article. I don't know if Marianne will comment on this later <laughs> to you, maybe. <laughs> we discussed this already. Yeah. But uh, some of the examples are here. So I think this would be, a, would be a very nice platform also for you to make it visible, be it Mexican craft traditions or, or a Durka Puya held in Helsinki. So let's talk about that later then in the afternoon. Some examples, what is missing, welcome to contribute. And here I will finish this off by just showing the links that we have and do take a brochure and have a look then later. Maybe if you have a question or two, there is still, I have two minutes left. Yes, you have Efficient me despite the technical problems, so, so <coughs> thank you. Yes, <laughs> Oh, yeah, I have a question. Um, because um, when I have heard about this thing, it's been difficult for me to understand, uh, in a way, like who can own a tradition. And, and I think because you normally, when you have a, if you want to, um, for example, tell about a tradition there, so it has to be some kind of community or something. But I think many of the traditions are something that are specifically not owned by anyone. That is something that uh, happens a bit everywhere and is done by... Um, but it, it doesn't have such an organizational structure. And then it feels like um, that um, if an organizational association... Uh, it's kind of I like appropriating <laughs> something that's of everyone. Mm. Uh, and, and this is a bit of a question. Like who... Uh, can anyone... Uh, tell about this, like details of the living her heritage, mm. or like, like, how do you define um, who is like the organization that is kind of mm. legitimate enough mm. to mm. to talk about a certain detail? Good question, and not a very easy one. I mean, this is what community-based inventorying is about. So, what are the communities that feel that? we should contribute and this is something we would like to tell about and maybe also to think of the question that are we the ones that can tell about it or is there something secret or something that not everyone in the community would like to share with others those are really important uh, questions to consider we don't see the 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 way that you you sign under the or you're the one the community behind that it's about owning but it can be seen as such and we always encourage communities to do it together so for example if there I don't know if there would be a tradition related to one country and if there are for example cultural associations promoting that culture that the work that they do is that they have festivals they organize events and they want to promote their own culture in in Finland so that these kind of associations that they would do it together but I know in related to many traditions there's not an NGO and and so it's not an easy question, but and I think there are different options. Come and say that uh, uh, another, that, ah, why did you inform this tradition? This is yeah. our, that's all we are. Yeah, so we encourage for cooperation. Okay. Okay, but maybe we'll move forward now and we can continue also related to this discussion then in the workshop. And I'll give the microphone then to Marian Abdul-Karim. <laughs> 